Hello, my name is Mickey. I am the designer and programmer of this game called Order Automatica. Uh, I wanted to make a how to play video for people who are trying to play this game. Uh, it's a turn-based auto battler inspired by Hearthstone Battlegrounds and Super Auto Pets. So if you're familiar with those kind of games or other kind of roguelikes rogue and roguelites, you're probably going to understand what's going on here. Um, it's also a lot like Just King or Vampire Survivors where you're getting a shop um, and upgrading your team every turn. So when you first get in, um, you'll, you can click Begin Ritual Eternal and um, it's going to ask you to pick an indulgence. So this is a, a power-up that will affect like your whole team. So for now, I'll pick this one. Um, it's going to allow us to sell our allies for an extra two essence per level. Uh, essence is just like gold, so um, I'll click that for now because that's kind of the easiest to understand. So this is kind of the main screen. Uh, this is where you build your team. Um, you have ten essence, uh, and this is the cost for each thing here. So. The main thing we're looking at is our allies. Uh, these are who we place on our board and who make our team. When we hover over them, we can see what their special ability is. Uh, this is Bloodkeeper, it's level one, and its ability that is, is on kill, if an enemy is damaged by this unit and it dies this turn, it will gain one, three, six health and attack. And the one, three, six is, um, the amount for this level. So on level one, it will um, gain one health and attack. On level two, it'll gain three health and attack, uh, and so on. So let's start with this one. Um, the numbers in the grid represent the attack order. So um, this will make more sense when we see our battle, but this number one will attack first. Um, and then Number two, uh, this ally is called Life Holder, and it will give adjacent allies um, health when it dies. Um, in this game, when we say adjacent, it means just cardinally adjacent, so not diagonal. So if I put it here, um, it will when it dies, it will give this ally health. Um, I don't want to buy this one right now, uh, because so I'm going to do Reattune, which is going to give us a new set of stuff in the shop. Um, and uh, this is Silent Executioner, he's just kind of like a big chonker. He's got a lot of health and attack, but no special ability. So we'll start off and grab him. So we have our team, we know when this one dies it's going to give health to both of these adjacent allies. So we have a pretty good setup right now, so good for first level. So we'll go to Seek Understanding and um, that will start the battle. Um, so here we all are on the battle screen. Um, this is the enemy team. We can take a look on them before take a look at them before anything starts. So um, once we're here, everything plays out automatically. It is an auto battler, and we can press bear witness to step through if we want. Um, so as I said, uh, it goes through. Um, based on the numbers in the grid. So each number is the turn order. It will tell us on the bottom what's happening. So um, our ally in cell one is gonna attack an enemy in the closest occupied column. That just means that um, when it's somebody's, when it's an ally's turn, their normal turn, not their special ability, they're just going to attack using their attack number um, and they're gonna just pick a random ally in the closest occupied column. So it's kind of like it gets rid of one column first and then if there were people back here, it'd go to them. So we can see that happen. Uh, it, chose, it randomly chose that one to attack. And um, now this one's gonna attack and it also randomly chose one. And the reason the uh, health doesn't go down until after both of them attack is the fiction is kind of that um, both turns are happening at the same time. So we don't get the advantage of 
attacking before the enemy. Uh, both, both characters that are in turn one will attack at the same time and will get their attack off no matter what. So um, we did proc this character's special ability because we, we killed this um, other Bloodkeeper in cell two during this turn. And so this is gonna get one attack in health. Um, so now we get to go again. Uh, now it's turn two, they have no one in their cell two. So we can see what happens and it will, that's the only character it has to attack. So it attacks that one. And we proc its ability, which is to um, summon spirit friars to all empty spots in its row. So we can watch that happen. And we can also see that this, uh, the enemy grid has a, this indulgence, which is um, all summons gain plus one plus one. Uh, so like I said before, our indulgences affect our whole grid. So you can see that e both um, summons it gets there are gonna get plus one plus one. Additionally, um, this character has an item uh, when we hover over, we can see it has an item called Annulus Terrarum, which uh, on death it summons a, something else as well. So we can watch that happen. It uh, will summon a war, war automaton to a random empty spot. So um, it's also going to get this ability for summoning that. So you can kind of see that this this team is like a heavy summoning team. Um, it's it's got a summoner and a summoning item and the summoning indulgence. So we're gonna have to figure out how to uh, how to build our team to go against that. Uh, so we're going on the next turn, and we can see our big chonker hitting that guy, and then um, it just keeps going through until all the all the cells and these ones get to attack even though they were just summoned there. This is an interesting strategy you can think about. Let's see. So we're just gonna let this play out. That one kills that one. And it looks like we're about to win here. You win by destroying all the enemies in the other cell, uh, in the other grid. If all of your characters are, die, um, that's when you lose. And there are no draws in this game, so it counts as a loss if you, if you lose all your characters. So, we made it through there, we got a victory. Uh, we get to pick another indulgence. You get to pick one every level. And let's go with um, this retaliation one. So all retaliation damage is increased by one. Um, so we don't have any allies right now that do retaliation damage. Um, and we're, uh, so let's see if we can get one. Um, we're gonna reattune. All right, none of these I know do it as well. But we're gonna use, cause we have this indulgence which gives us more more essence per to sell. So we're gonna do another reattune to see what we can find. Okay, so we got another life holder. Uh, another big thing is that um, you can level up uh, all of your allies up to level three. And the way you do that is you need to buy three and put them in um, a row or a column. So I'll start uh, getting ready to, to level up life holder. Um, I have two now, and if I get one more and place it here, we'll, we'll see that it will level up. All right, and now we have another one. I have another blood keeper, so we're going to do the same thing. And since we have our indulgence, we'll dismiss this one, and we got an extra two gold. So um, let's do one more reattune. Okay. So we still didn't get anyone who does retaliation damage, but we did get another blood keeper. So we're gonna go ahead and level up blood keeper. And then um, when, whenever it levels up, it will move uh, all the units into the, 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 the cell you just placed that unit. And we'll put that back in number one. And um, well, actually let's do this because these buff whatever adjacent ally. When this dies, it'll buff this one, and when this dies, it'll buff this one. Um, and we'll even, uh, so we have this at level two now, but we want to eventually get it to level three. So 
we can freeze this ally that's in our store. So next time this will still be here. All right, so let's see what happens now. Here's a level two enemy teams. Uh, it looks like they've added some stuff. And we'll uh, go up to, we'll speed up the gameplay now that I've explained some of it. So uh, you can go up to four X speed and you can turn on autoplay and I'll do that in a bit, but for now we'll keep stepping through. All right, so just normal attacks here. Uh, kill that on the first turn. Those are getting really buffed. This is gonna be tough for us. Watch these buffs happening. So we're getting our one character buffed. You can see the strats are, it's, it's hard to roll with just a single um, really strong character. Um, but since uh, unlike, you know, Hearthstone Battlegrounds or Super Auto Pets, the characters don't attack each other and do damage um, automatically together. So, um, yeah, it's good to have, it's, it, it tends to be that you want more. So we lost that battle, but we still get to keep playing. Uh, we'll pick another one of these indulgences for now. Um, the object of the game is to get nine wins. Um, and you have three lives. So we just lost one life from losing. So that means uh, we can lose up to two more times, um, So we, but we need to get nine wins. So as we learn more about what we're doing, we can start to preview the next team. So here's the next team coming up. Um, just like us, these teams follow the same rules of how they progress through the game. So. Um, you can see that this is the same team we've been fighting and they've just been adding at, just like we have um, and we can like take a look at what they have so like I said this is kind of like a summoning team they've got two summoning indulgences they have this this summoning character with a summoning item these are this is another summoning character um, demi summoner it summons um, uh, two other characters next next to it um, when it dies. So we can start thinking about what might uh, work for a summoning character. So actually Bloodkeeper is a really good anti-summoning character because it can keep buffing itself every time it gets a kill. Most of these um, characters that get summoned are less powerful, so we can get them in one hit and keep on buffing ourselves. So that's a pretty good character. Um, but let's see what else we can do. Uh, let's um, let's start by reattuning. We have our two um, indulgences, so we can get a lot of money if we sell someone. So let's see. But let's see uh, what our next roll will give us. Okay, we've gotten now we have two blood keepers. Uh, so we'll go ahead and buy them both and level up to level three. So now um, every time this unit kills someone, it's going to give itself uh, six health and six attack, which is a lot. Um, let's do, uh, and here's a, I think this character would also be good. Uh, actually, let's let's hold off. Um, let's retune once and see what we, we get. All right, so this is a little tricky. We, we got, we only have two essence left, um, but we're going to, even though we don't really want to, we're gonna go ahead and sell one of these to get um, a bunch of essence using our indulgences. All right, so we have our um, our retaliation damage, and this happens to be a, a retaliation item. So when attacked, uh, this is gonna do, whatever character has this is gonna do retaliation damage equal to the attacking allies level, which means if a level one character attacks uh, someone holding this item, it's going to do one damage back to them. So let's give that to our um, our blood keeper, and uh, let's reroll one more time. And um, this is another really good unit that's good against summoning teams. It's called Faithless Pylon, and it will negate damage enemies' abilities for the rest of battle. Um, see, everything here is still level one. Uh, it only negates abilities for enemies that are um, the same level or lower. So if this 
uh, rant. If we get good RNG and this hits um, this friar, it, it won't, when it dies, it won't summon two. So let's see, um, that's all we can actually do for now. Our, I know our team looks a lot smaller than theirs, but we do have one level three character. Um, we'll see, it's part of learning. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it on autoplay um, so we can see. Once you know what's happening, you can turn on autoplay for battles and just kind of watch things play out um, because everything does happen based on the rules set by uh, character special abilities, etc. So we didn't get the good RNG. Um, we didn't kill that, uh, that friar up there, so it is gonna um, summon two spirit fires when it dies, but uh, you can see we got a big, we're getting, um, we're getting a lot of buffs from killing these enemies, and um, because we have this, this spiked helmet, um, every time someone hits us, we're, we're kind of killing them. Um, And we're getting plus one damage because of uh, our indulgence. That's why it's doing two damage. I was confused for a second why I was doing two damage. So we've uh, unlocked a really strong character here. Um, using the spiked helmet with Bloodkeeper is kind of a secret that might get nerfed later, but is uh, really powerful now. So I'll put this on the fastest speed and watch this go by. It looks like our one character is probably gonna take care of this whole board. Um, this is pretty interesting. This is a character that's, uh, this build is almost a little, uh, too powerful, so it's something we might remove. But, um, it's pretty interesting having designed this to have these things come up where, uh, I didn't even think of them. All the items and abilities just kind of work together to create these synergies that I don't, um, I don't always think of ahead of time. So, um... It keeps going like this, and your team keeps getting better and better, and so does the enemy team. Um, there is a... And um, ultimately, you'll either lose all your lives or you'll get nine wins. And um, let me... I'll, I'll abandon this ritual for now. But you can see um, kind of the goal of what you're doing is to achieve all, all these nine attainments. So we were able to achieve two in that run. Um, buff an ally to have 33 attack power or more. We j we're just able to do that. This attainment is level three. Uh, create one level three ally, which we also did. And there's a bunch of these. Um, one of them is just getting total victory. So total victory is getting nine wins. Um, and my favorite one here is this is getting a total victory without any level three allies. So this is a really fun one to try and do. And um, my idea here was to get all the, was to try and force a lot of different play styles. So it's really fun to try and make a build where you can win, uh, get a total victory without any level three allies. So that's it. I hope that explained how to play a little better. Um, this is my first time making a video like this, so I hope to get better and explain this more and get better at explaining it, uh, and I'd love any feedback you have. Thank you for watching this all the way through if you have so far. Um, and that's all for now. Uh, please give us any feedback you have on the itch page, or um, that's the best way. Um, thanks again. I